Before we begin today's video, I just want to mention that we haven't done a speculation video in a while. In fact, it's something that we pretty much swore off of because, in my opinion, I feel like it creates unnecessary levels of fan canon and expectations that I feel don't really need to exist. I feel like a lot of the larger YouTube channels related to spoilers or theories are using the ambiguity related to the end credit or post credit scene for Shang-Chi in order to drive clicks by basically stating any wild theory that they can think of when the actual answer is pretty much staring all of us right in the face. That being said, enjoy the rest of this video as I feel like it presents the most rational theory about what we saw during the first post credit scene in Shang-Chi. It's been about two weeks since Shang-Chi dropped, and I figured we would stop by today and explain the first post credit scene for Shang-Chi. Obviously, there are spoilers for the film and the rest of the MCU, so if you haven't seen it yet, maybe come back after you've seen those things. Throughout the events of Shang-Chi, we learn quite a bit about the believed to be mystical item known as the Ten Rings, used by both Wen Wu and later in the film Shang-Chi. The Ten Rings origins are not explained in the film, as Wen Wu does not explicitly explain how or where he found them, however it's theorized that he found them within a crater or a tomb. And this is important when it comes to our theory, even though I'm going to be honest, I really don't even think it's a theory, I just think it's probably a fact. And I know that that's bold, but all of the pieces fit and they're staring us right in the face. Primarily being used as a weapon throughout their history, the Ten Rings were eventually recovered by Shang-Chi and given to Wong in order to study their abilities and possibly uncover their origins. During this investigation, it's found by Wong that the rings were in actuality calling out to somebody or something in the MCU, and that they don't match anything known to the experts in the MCU on various disciplines, i.e. mystical artifacts, alien tech, or earth science. The answer, in my opinion, is fairly simple and is staring us all right in the face for who the Ten Rings were calling out to, and it fits right within the current and upcoming established MCU canon and lore. The Ten Rings are calling out to the Celestials. The Eternals are coming soon, and these rings are probably an artifact belonging to the events that transpired thousands of years ago in the past related to them. I believe it's entirely possible that the Ten Rings at one point belong to either a member of the Eternals or their enemies, the Deviants. Now keep in mind that the MCU is not the comics, oftentimes they play fast and loose with established canon in order to make those lore pieces fit together in film. The Celestials are godlike entities within the comics and the MCU with motivations far too complicated and advanced for the average person to comprehend. They also created the Eternals and the Deviants. In the comics, they also created mankind, and it seems fairly safe that the Ten Rings were a weapon that came to Earth along with these beings to be used by them. The Deviants and the Eternals waged war on Earth, with the Eternals eventually winning the battle and securing the planet, locking away the Deviants. We learn in the second trailer for the Eternals that the actions of the Avengers and the second snap that brought everyone back from the decimation gave off enough energy to cause an event referred to as the Emergence. We don't quite yet know what the Emergence is, however I want to make an educated guess here. The Eternals and the Deviants warred for quite some time before either the Eternals or the Celestials ended the war and locked the remaining Deviants away. In the comics, the Deviants are at first subterranean, and it's possible that the Emergence refers to them being freed from whatever Celestial or Eternal prison they were being held in. We also know that the Eternals were on Earth, in hiding, in order to protect mankind in the event that the Deviants ever returned, so far as to not intervene in any other conflict that did not directly have Deviants in it. So I think that this theory is safe and sound. This is the justification for why the Ten Rings have never started calling out to the Celestials in the past. The universe is a massive place, and the scale is incomprehensible, and there are a finite amount of Celestials in the universe, and within the MCU we have absolutely no idea what their goals are from being to being. The only Celestial we really know anything about at this point was Ego, who essentially decided that he wanted to be everywhere and everything. But that does not inherently make the other motivations of the Celestials any clearer. With the Decimation possibly allowing the Deviants to be freed, we can assume the same energy activated the beacon within the Ten Rings calling out to the Celestials in order to come back and solve the Deviant problem once and for all. You might be thinking to yourself, Nick, that sounds scary, what do you mean by solve the problem? Well, basically total and absolute destruction of the planet. 
The Celestials in the comics can be kinda dicks, and their judgment is swift and brutal. The Celestials create and destroy life on a whim, and based entirely off of their own individual goals and motivations. If a Celestial arrives on a planet and determines that they suck, they can just eradicate them with barely any effort at all. It's possible that the emergence by the Deviants is just one excuse a Celestial would need to come back to Earth and end it all. Or maybe the Celestial spent like 10 minutes on Facebook and decided that we don't deserve to exist in the first place and the Deviants have nothing to do with it. Also, we know that once Wen Wu suffers tremendous personal loss in the form of his wife's death and begins reusing the Ten Rings, he starts to hallucinate visions of his wife, caused by the extra-dimensional being known as the Dweller in Darkness. And even this has ties to the comics, as the Dweller in Darkness was instrumental in the first Deviant War with Atlantis. However, that does not mean that the Ten Rings come from the same dimension as the Dweller in Darkness. It just means that they can be used as a conduit for it to communicate, which actually makes perfect sense, as the Celestials in the comics don't exactly talk to characters, they more communicate telepathically. Also, another piece of lore associated with the Eternals is their ability to live, die, and then be reborn again within their ship. Their ship, if buried, which is most likely the case, could easily be mistaken for a tomb, which is possibly where the rings were recovered in the first place. However, I will go over this aspect of their death and rebirth cycle in my upcoming comic history and origins videos for the Eternals individual characters. And that is about it for this theory video, and I hope that this ends up being the case because I think it makes the most sense, and I really don't want to see a lot of those characters ham-fisted into the MCU in this way, especially when the Celestials makes the most sense. Now, maybe you're thinking to yourself, Nick, you're way off base here, here's the actual place that the Ten Rings came from, and if that's the case, feel free to drop that comment below and let me know where you think they came from in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching this video, this has been Nick from Key Issues, and remember the motto, Eternals over everything.